I think you fell asleep again, dear. <laughs> so I made a community post about people's expectations for Modern Warfare 2022, and the ratio pretty much speaks for itself. It seems as though Vanguard has put off a lot of fans of the franchise, as well as your average gamer. It's very apparent, especially nowadays. But Call of Duty is a very weird series comprised of hits and misses. Although I respect Call of Duty for what it's done in the past, it seemed to have set a foundation on what makes a tactical first-person shooter so beloved for years to come. And nowadays, due to its recent blunders, it's viewed as nothing more than a waste of gigs. Although in the case of Modern Warfare 2022, we must remember that this is coming from Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward has a pretty great track record for making installments of the Call of Duty franchise. With that in consideration, I want to make a sort of retrospective on the Call of Duty franchise so that I can set my expectations for Modern Warfare 2022. I'll be going over COD games I've played and when I think about them, as well as sort of compare the different companies that make the games in question. And I figured that the best way to do that is to make a tier list for all of the Call of Duty games I've played. I will be going over every single Call of Duty game that I've played based on my experience with the game overall. So of course, this involves going over a few things with each COD. The campaign, the multiplayer, and the side mode. Before I start, however, I'm putting three games into the Never Played section. I've not played Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 3, and I've never played World at War, even though I probably should. With that being said though, I know about World at War's story, and if I were to rank it based on story alone, I would probably put it in S tier, but since I have not played the game myself, I cannot judge the game overall. Now, with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on ranking these games. With the random arrangement sorted, we're starting off strong with a D tier Call of Duty. Briefing's about to start, what the hell are you boys doing? World War II in its current state still sucks. The story is poorly written, it's generic, stereotypical, too upbeat, and overall an insult to World War II stories. The plot of World War II is incredibly generic, although it does have its moments since some of the characters do have some good chemistry, but then there's also some characters that have no substance at all. Again, it feels like Hollywood levels of stereotypical, especially considering the fact that the black person in the story is not used as much as any of the other characters, and neither are the two females we see in the campaign. A little tip that you should keep in your head is when it comes to diversity, it's good when done right and not when these characters are shoved in for the sake of it. Although it's a nice touch that there is a section in the campaign where you rescue German civilians. Props to this game for bringing this into light, since a lot of World War II media shows the Germans in this part of history as nothing but evil. But again, it's weighed down by how generic this entire campaign is. Aside from that section and how some of the characters have their moments, World War II's writing is overall pretty bad. Top that off with the fact that the gameplay is pretty mediocre overall. It's a nice touch that in the campaign they went back to old school Call of Duty roots where you need met kids in order to heal rather than have regenerating health, so you need to be more careful. But it's linear as hell, the tank section sucks, the spy mission, while unique, I feel is too short, and the rest of the missions make the entire campaign feel average and not worth a second playthrough at all. The multiplayer is also incredibly pitiful less weapon variety, the arbitrary divisions that mess with weapon synergy, the surprise mechanics, the sandbox is incredibly limited, along with the terrible map design, and top that off with how buggy the game was and still is. Zombies mode is shit. No wall repairs, mystery box sucks, the charm of previous zombies modes is gone, the characters in zombies have literally no character, and the mode is too easy because of how its progression works. Trash game, D tier. I'd love to. My journey to victory has begun! Death to the FBLA! Black Ops 2. Which, by the way, we have three years until it may take place. Oh no. A pretty great installment to the franchise. I enjoy all of the futuristic aspects of this game, but it still blends in with the historical parts of the Cold War. The characters are amazing and the story, while it did have a few hiccups here and there, I am retard. Was still pretty enjoyable. No characters feel shoved in. They all have great chemistry with each other. It has a lot of really good parallels with Black Ops 1. Menendez, who is the villain, felt like an actual threat. 
and the theme around this campaign had me captivated. It had this sort of grim dark atmosphere where you'll see several people suffer and die, and some characters like Woods act so melancholy because of what's happened in this storyline. I love that about Black Ops 2. Top that off with the fact that Black Ops 2 has a branching narrative based on the choices you make. Your decisions actually matter and it can change the story. This is how a COD campaign should be done. The multiplayer for Black Ops 2 is also pretty good. It has a lot of balance on the weapons. The kill streaks are pretty overkill, which I admire personally. The maps are unique and really well designed. The hit detection is improved, except for the knife. The knife sucks. But overall, the multiplayer in Black Ops 2 is quite the package, although the game is filled with hackers and a bunch of lag issues, which is a major problem. And then the zombies mode comes in, which is pretty mixed from my experience. On one hand, the zombies experience is there. On the other hand, it's pretty tedious, and some of the more simpler things like Pack-a-Punch have become convoluted. Transit is a pretty awful map, no debate there, and the DLC maps range from okay to pretty good, but Dead Ops Arcade not being there? That's a shame. Pretty good game overall, but has missed potential here and there. And for that, I will put it in A tier. Using your knife is even faster than switching to your pistol. Knife the watermelon. Modern Warfare, one of the most beloved series of COD games, starting with the original. Modern Warfare is a classic. It's got some of the best characters on there like Captain Price, Gaz, Nikolai, and Soap. And together, they are on a mission to stop a civil war in Russia. Modern Warfare is pretty fun overall, and I wasn't expecting to say that my favorite mission in Modern Warfare is All Gillied Up, which is a full-on stealth mission that takes place in a flashback of the aftermath of Chernobyl. It also has quite the amount of action, and top that off with all of its absolutely jaw-dropping scenes like when an entire city was nuked. Frankly, during my playtime in Modern Warfare's campaign, I never found myself being bored. Every section has its best moments that make me concentrate and play the game better. The thing we love about Modern Warfare is how intense it is. The campaign has its intensity, and so does the multiplayer. COD 4's multiplayer was a lot more simpler back then compared to its next titles, but it was still pretty enjoyable. Modern Warfare is also when they started to really innovate and also provide a lot of quantity into its multiplayer, which of course has tons of quality. Several modes, 16 maps, a good selection of perks, and, at the time, a revolutionary progression system. The game was addicting to play, unless the people were spamming grenades on Bog. Oh, and also the remastered version is really, and I mean really good. In the remastered version, they added cut content, easter eggs, new animations, it's nice to see them go beyond what other remasters have done. Also, it has this really funny glitch. Very good game, S tier. And he says it has encouraged him to do something he's never done before, publicly acknowledge that he is gay. Advanced warfare, more like advanced trash. This was when Call of Duty started its trend of advanced movement, which I know can spark a lot of discussion among the COD community. If you want my input on advanced movement in Call of Duty, I don't really care as long as the gameplay is enjoyable. Advanced Warfare, for the most part, was not enjoyable. Although we did get a pretty good meme out of it. The campaign of Advanced Warfare is about as uninteresting as you can get. The main characters were forgettable, except for Gideon, he was cool for the most part. Or is Michael's a KIA? What? The villain was forgettable, the plot is forgettable, and some of the advanced movement is not utilized enough or encouraged throughout the campaign. It feels like they were included as one-off mechanics. Advanced Warfare had a lot of cool concepts that were all just executed poorly. It is especially apparent in the campaign. The multiplayer isn't good either. In fact, it's terrible. Right off the bat, the fact that they thought adding in alternate variations of the weapons that have altered stats was a good idea is baffling to me. It fucks with the balance of the game entirely, and you only get them through, you guessed it, surprise mechanics. It's nauseating that there are business practices like this that straight up affect the gameplay. 
They even went as far as to monetize custom loadouts. Like, this shit is unbelievable. Although the maps in Advanced Warfare have some good qualities in them and have their own unique style of map design, it's kind of ruined by the janky advanced movement. The Exo Survival Mode is also pretty mediocre. It's pretty much just Modern Warfare 3 Spec Ops Survival Mode, but watered down in every conceivable metric. The weapon packs in Exo Survival Mode limits your experimentation on weapons, you can't combine certain types of guns in these loadouts, and are forced to use specific ones depending on the pack you choose. It's a stupid design decision. Although the enemy variety is good, I'll give it that. The biggest offender, perhaps, is Advanced Warfare's Zombies Mode. The mode is DLC, which is already a red flag because that's never been the case with the COD Zombies mode, and I can confidently say, it was not worth the purchase. It's broken, it spawns a bunch of zombies that have a lot of stupid gimmicks, the EMZs disabling your exosuit is annoying as fuck, the special zombies spawn way too frequently, it's the dumbest shit ever. Waste of money, D tier. Next, Modern Warfare 2019. This game was like the second coming of Christ at the time, because we were given a bunch of bad Call of Duty games before this. Modern Warfare 2019 was a breath of fresh air, not only because of how they made the campaign, but the structure of Call of Duty's gameplay has been completely innovated. In my opinion, MW 2019 is a mixed bag, because there's a lot of great stuff in this game, and there's also some problems. So let's dive in. Before I talk about the campaign, I just want to say, this game looks fantastic. The new engine really makes particular locations in the game look astounding. Anyways, the campaign for the most part was pretty good. We get to see a brand new storyline between Captain Price, Gaz, and some other brand new characters like Alex and Farah. Throughout the campaign you see a lot of fucked up things happen. Civilians dying, innocents being hanged, soldiers getting killed in action, mass executions. There's even a part in Clean House where the game forces you to restart if you shoot a baby. And if you do it three times in a row, the game questions your sanity and boots you out of the mission. Which is a pretty funny secret, albeit a dark one. Just like Black Ops 2, I like it when stories are dark. Although, unlike Black Ops 2, it seems like a few dark sections were put into this campaign only for the sake of controversy. Modern Warfare 2 was very controversial, but there was a reason behind it due to the fact that the story in MW2 was extremely well done. And while Modern Warfare 2019's story is also pretty good, it does seem like they only put in certain dark sections just because of more controversy. But, I did say only certain sections, because there are other really dark sections that were actually done pretty well, and they have a reason to be there. My favorite is perhaps the interrogation of the Butcher. The Butcher's wife and child are kidnapped so that you can get some information out of him before you finally kill him. Spearing him is weak. You must kill him. That is a must. It's a really well thought out scene and I adore it. On top of that, every mission is unique and fun to play. Clean House, in my opinion, is my obvious pick for the best mission, because it's a mission where you have to be on your toes constantly. I could go on about how all the other missions are fantastic, but we'd be here forever if I did. My problems with the campaign boil down to the villain's motives and some elements of the story. First problem. They tried painting a false narrative as if the Russians were the ones that caused the highway of death, when in reality it was done by the US. I see this as a common issue with these war games, where they mindlessly portray other countries as evil to the point that it's uncreative or misleading, and this is perhaps the worst offender. I feel like if they didn't paint it as if the Russians caused this historical event, it would have created a much more interesting narrative. My other problem with the campaign is the villains. Barkov's motives boil down to simply, I don't like terrorists. Huh? As for the Alcatala, they don't like foreign powers. However, it feels like this conflict is forced since that's all there is to it. Their motives aren't fleshed out a lot, and thus, I didn't really feel like anything was at stake. However, nearly everything else about this campaign was honestly some of the best I've seen in a COD game. Next, the multiplayer. At launch, the multiplayer was kind of mediocre due to the lack of content and balancing issues. However, when the multiplayer of MW 2019 was patched up and filled with more content, it was actually pretty awesome. Fuck shipment though. It is pretty disappointing how broken the game becomes when it comes to the updates like Pacific for Warzone, but I adore how innovative MW2019's multiplayer is. Using cover to mount your weapons, slowly opening doors as well as peeking through them, the complete overhaul of weapon customization, executions, this is the next evolution of COD multiplayer. It also has a wide variety of modes, including Ground War, which is basically COD trying to be Battlefield, and I approve. I also adore the attention to detail on the environment and the weapons. 
This game went all out on showing minute details on certain guns and other things like grenades rolling down hills or popping tires on a car. More games should have this because it gives us a sense of immersion like we're on an actual battlefield. If I had some things to criticize about MW2019's multiplayer, it would be that the game lacks the feature of map voting, most maps have a lot of camping spots due to how complex the map design is, as well as their size, and don't get me started on shipment. Overall, I like MW2019's multiplayer a lot, but it's a bummer that it's pretty much unplayable from what I've heard. And then there's Spec Ops mode, which is, uh, not great. It's been improved a lot since launch, that much is obvious. However, I very much prefer the Spec Ops modes from the previous Modern Warfare games. Spec Ops in MW2019 feels like a chore more than anything. It's a good way to grind for XP, but that's all there is to it when it comes to my experience. So overall, great game, but it has some major flaws. And for that, I will put it in B tier. Train go boom. 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 Railroaded car for transportation purposes spontaneously combusts. Black Ops 3. Okay, a bit of a hot take here. Black Ops 3 is my favorite Call of Duty game. Obviously, Black Ops 3 is not perfect. It has its flaws too. But in my opinion, this game is pretty fun. Of course, we'll have to acknowledge the major flaws that this game has. The story of Black Ops 3 in its entirety makes no sense. It keeps making expositions for its new storyline and world with just a bunch of jargon that either makes no sense or holds no weight. Because the game doesn't bother telling you why any of the things it shows you even matters. You don't know what purpose your character and allies serve. You don't know why anything even happens. It's all just pointless storytelling. Black Ops 1 and 2's campaigns had purposes. Meanwhile, the entire story of Black Ops 3 feels pointless. And don't get me started on how fucking annoying it is to hear Taylor say, Ha ha, train go boom! The biggest reason on why the campaign is so bad is that it gives you the illusion that this is somehow connected to the previous Black Ops games. Now, considering the core concept of what Black Ops 3's story is supposed to be, if they had found a way to connect it to the previous Black Ops games, that would have been sick. The problem is that it doesn't, because the characters are unlikable, the story makes no sense, there's nothing at stake, and most of the time you probably don't even know what's going on. Gameplay wise, the campaign does have its moments. There's some fun boss battles, between missions you can customize your loadouts and your character's appearance, the DNI mechanics are fun to use, there is some enjoyment that can be had in the campaign's gameplay. But again, it's just weighed down by how boring and tedious the storyline is and the co-op doesn't really enhance the experience. Now, the multiplayer for this game, in my opinion, is pretty good. But it's dead. No one fucking plays it. Shit. First off, everything I feel like Advanced Warfare got wrong about Advanced Movement, Black Ops 3 got right. Although the map design is your generic three-way lanes, I don't really mind it as much like other COD games solely for the Advanced Movement. The maps really complement the usage of it, like wall running, double jumps, sliding. It's all useful in the albeit generic map design. I also really dig the specialist abilities. It gives the game its own flair and for the most part are really fun to use. My favorite specialist ability is the Reaper's Scythe, a chain gun for an arm. Weapon customization is also pretty solid. Although your selection of weapons is limited because most of the roster has to be unlocked, which is one of my gripes with this game, I liked the customization for the weapons. And lastly, the score streaks. While I do think score streaks are a downgrade compared to kill streaks, using the score streaks in Black Ops 3 is so much fun. This is perhaps my favorite score streak system in any COD game. They basically took Black Ops 2's kill streaks and cranked it up to 11. It's fucking insane. The raps are batshit crazy. The Cerberus is fun to use, and so is the Talon. The Dart is also pretty dope. I love the concept of a mobile missile that can also be used as a drone. There's also the Mothership. If you're lucky enough to get this beast, you're in for quite a ride. Although it's not all perfect, this game's multiplayer is packed with shitty microtransactions. Perhaps the worst offender is the emotes. I cringe every time I see someone even use them. Man, don't you just love CP? Wait, no, that came out wrong. Hold on, I can explain- So yeah, Black Ops 3's campaign sucks ass, and the multiplayer also has its flaws. But the zombies? Oh my god, the zombies. It's so good, guys. It's so fucking good. 
The replay value is off the charts here in Black Ops 3 Zombies. Using a certain gun for long enough will unlock attachments for it that you can use the next time you equip it. The Pack-a-Punch weapons are also fun to use, like Turned, which has a chance to control a zombie to fight for you. The map variety is also really good, but there are some badly designed ones like Setsubo. All the maps under Zombie Chronicles are also really fun to play. There's also the Gobble Gums, which are pretty fun to use, and while it can be criticized for making the game too easy, in my opinion, it's a nice fun little option to spice things up. Also, you don't have to use them. In my opinion, Black Ops 3 has the best Zombies mode in any COD game, and on top of that, Black Ops 3 is also filled with... MUDS! Dead Ops Arcade also makes a really strong return, and it is super fun to play. I wish you could unlock the mode similar to how Black Ops 1 did it, but that's just a little nitpick. It's fine the way it is. Although Black Ops 3 is my favorite Call of Duty, I cannot put it in S tier because of its flaws. I will put Black Ops 3 in A tier. As much as I like to fanboy over this game, I will acknowledge the fact that the game has problems, and so that's why it's in A tier. Call of Duty Vanguard. Mmm. I have an idea. <laughs> what more can I say that hasn't been said already? It is perhaps the worst COD game ever made. The campaign is extremely forgettable, the multiplayer is busted, the zombies mode is an absolute disgrace, and I never want to touch this game ever again. So now that I've said that, we can talk about something actually good. God, opening this menu just makes me nostalgic. Modern Warfare 2, the COD game that all of us would play as kids, and rage into the mic because somebody used the riot shield. Oh, riot shield! I'm a pussy that used riot shield! Undoubtedly a masterpiece of a game. Three modes and they're all super fun and replayable. The campaign is super intense, and it also has an amazing plot. Of course, you got back some absolutely beloved characters like Captain Price, Soap, but then you have Ghost, who is just an absolute giga chad, and unlike MW 2019 where the plot felt forced, MW2's plot actually has a lot of weight put into it. You got the terrorist attacks in Russia, who will frame it as if the Americans have caused the massacre, and then you have General Shepard, who is one of the most iconic COD villains of all time. Shepard has a really good motive for his actions, actions that made us cry our eyes out. Not gonna lie, I got really emotional there. Shepard wants to be known as a hero, and so to be sure he can have that title after this war, he takes the DSM for himself so that they couldn't find out how he was involved in the terrorist attacks in Russia. I love all the characters, and personally I don't mind the constant action around the campaign. I feel like the intensity of this story is what makes Modern Warfare 2 stand out, but I can see why it can get tiring for some people. After going through hell and loss, we get an absolute kick-ass ending. And we finally finish off General Shepard. God, it's just so good. The multiplayer in MW2 is also a banger. The map designs are vertical and actually require some tactical strategies. The weapons have their own unique uses and top that off with the customization. Something I can give MW2 props for is how you need to carefully choose what weapon, what attachments, and what perks you should use for a multiplayer match. It enhances the experience overall, and MW2's weapon choices has quite the amount of variety. The progression system also captivates me to keep playing and get high scores, and every single weapon, action, and perk has challenges you can complete that gives you special XP rewards. That's really good for a progression system. Overall, great multiplayer. MW2 Spec Ops modes is also really fun to play. And while I prefer Zombies over Spec Ops, I gotta hand it to Infinity Ward on this one. They did a really good job here with the Spec Ops mode. It gives you a series of challenges that gives you difficulty options, and the harder the, diffi and the, harder the difficulty you complete it on, the more stars you get. And the more stars you get, the more challenges you unlock. That's a decent incentive to keep playing the mode, and all of them are pretty unique as well. Stealth missions, a training run, a wave-based mode, sniping juggernauts, fighting enemy forces to get through a bridge, one player being air support while the other fights on the ground. I love the variety in this mode and the incentive to try other challenges, and no matter what difficulty I play these challenges on, I have fun with every single one of them. So, undoubtedly, 
I have to put MW2 in S tier. Your iron shield is down. Death is no Infinite Warfare. This game was pretty controversial, and there's no doubt about that. A lot of fans were pissed off that they were doubling, or rather tripling down on the advanced movement. Me personally though, I was excited for Infinite Warfare. And was that excitement justified? Well, in a way, yes it was. Infinite Warfare feels like a diamond in the rough, because there are a lot of good things about this game, but in other aspects it lacks polish. And it's also due to the fact that the game was pretty controversial and fans weren't happy with how COD was turning out. With that in mind, let's talk about the campaign in Infinite Warfare. The campaign is actually really good. Usually in a COD campaign, you start as a new recruit for the army. But in Infinite Warfare, you play as someone who already has a lot of experience in the military, and is actually a really good character too. A lot of good characters are in here in this campaign, like Salter, Gator, Ethan. I wasn't expecting to like any of these characters, but they're written very well. However, the villain is absolutely generic. He doesn't have any defining characteristics that make him stand out. The characters are great for the most part. The plot has a lot of good moments, and the finale was heartbreaking. The gameplay for the campaign is also really fun. All the weapons feel fun to use, there's a really good enemy variety, all of the environments look gorgeous, and perhaps the best part about Infinite Warfare's campaign are the space battles. This is the first time we got space combat in a Call of Duty game, and honestly I welcome it. The controls are good, the mechanics are fun to use, it's really fun maneuvering and taking down enemies, and it also feels satisfying to destroy battleships. Overall, Infinite Warfare's campaign is a banger. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for the multiplayer. The multiplayer for Infinite Warfare is absolute trash. While I do enjoy the specialist abilities that Black Ops 3 had, it doesn't feel as satisfying as Black Ops 3 in my opinion. Map design is pretty bad. From the looks of it, you could see some potential of complementing the advanced movement, but the maps are filled with invisible walls and out-of-bounds areas. The only map I actually enjoyed playing on was Mayhem, because to me it felt like the map complemented the advanced movement the most, and it's also got a really nice looking background. I'm a big fan of how it takes place near a black hole. Oh, and they brought back the rarities of weapons that have altered stats on them. Fantastic. I love it when there are microtransactions that completely alter the gameplay for the player's benefit, don't you? So yeah, multiplayer is pretty bad. As for the zombies mode, it's actually decent. The storyline's compelling, the maps are all unique, however I am not a fan of how cartoony it feels. I more so enjoy how Black Ops had a more darker tone in the zombies mode. Here it's a bit too silly for my liking. Another issue I have is that there are no camos to grind for the guns, and also that you could get modified variants of guns through, again, surprise mechanics. Really does feel like they took the innovation of Black Ops 3's zombies and downgraded it in some aspects in terms of variety. With that being said though, zombies in Infinite Warfare was pretty decent. The wonder weapons were fun to use, the maps all felt unique, the easter eggs were cool, the bosses were a neat little challenge, yeah, it's a good zombies mode. I find it very ironic that this is the game that sparked a lot of controversy. It really does feel like this game came out in the wrong time because of how the community got tired of advanced movement. Sure, the multiplayer was pretty bad, but you cannot deny that Infinite Warfare's campaign was something special, and the zombies was at least enjoyable. The game does have its flaws in all three modes, but I can appreciate a lot of things about this game. So for that, I am putting Infinite Warfare in B tier. We've had dogs in Call of Duty before, but never like this. This is someone you care about. Hi, doggy. Ghosts. Oh boy, this is kind of a tough one. I like some things about it, but ultimately, it's pretty mediocre. I don't think it's the worst COD ever, but it has a lot of concrete flaws that weigh it down a ton. I never got a chance to play the multiplayer of Ghosts. All I ever did in it was the campaign and solo runs on the Extinction mode so I'll have to only talk about those two. The campaign is shit. Look at all these characters that nobody cares about because 1. they have no relevance to anything, 2. they barely have any character at all, and 3. it feels like no matter what they go through in the terms of conflict, ultimately nothing happens to them. Getting shot? You're perfectly fine. Getting stabbed? That's nothing. Tis but a flesh wound. Hey, remember in Modern Warfare 2 when you got stabbed by Shepard, it actually felt like you got stabbed due to the fact that you had to try and pull it out, but the character struggled so hard to even do so? It was a really nerve-wracking moment because it looks painful to even try and pull it out of your stomach, 
but it also had to do with the fact that you had to save Captain Price. That's how you make suspenseful moments. There are absolutely no suspenseful moments in Ghost, aside from the ending, which is ironic because the ending is perhaps the worst thing about Ghost's campaign. You thought you won this huge conflict with the Federation, but then the big plot twist comes in where it turns out Rourke is alive, despite the fact he got shot by a Magnum, and even if the gunshot didn't kill him, he was underwater for like a few minutes. Campaign of this game is honestly really bad. There's quite the amount of missions in it, 18 to be precise, and none of them really stand out besides the very few missions where you actually use guerrilla tactics. You know, kinda like how this game was marketed as. Perhaps the best part about this campaign is Riley, the dog. You can't argue with me about the dog. They're the best part about this game solely for the fact that I like dogs. Besides that though, everything else sucks about the campaign. But what about Extinction? Eh, it was okay. I really like the concept of it, and there are some things I enjoy about it. The exploration, the different enemy types, the class systems. All in all, it's a pretty unique side mode. However, since this mode was heavily based on teamwork, and combine that with the fact that back then I had no Xbox Live, the game was too hard on solo runs. I quite literally could not beat this mode. Is it a skill issue? Probably. But I get the feeling that without a team to play with, I probably won't progress at all in this mode which isn't even round based like in Zombies, it's linear objectives. So as for Extinction, it's a cool concept, it can be fun at times, but since I never had the chance to play with other people, it got very boring, very quickly. Again, I never got the chance to play online multiplayer for the same reasons. And for that, I put Ghosts in D tier. Hey. Oh god, this piece of shit. Black Ops 4 Night Edition. Look everybody, we can be cheap unoriginal fucks too! Who wants to play Call of Duty but in Fortnite? I don't. Black Ops 4 is terrible, and it's just another example of why I want Battle Royales to die as a genre. I don't enjoy Battle Royales, and to see it in a mainline Call of Duty as its main premise drives me mad. I played a few matches of Blackout and was just bored. It's not fun for me. It's just another dumb Battle Royale. Oh, and if you want my opinion on Warzone, I don't care for it either. It's just boring to me. At the end of the day, man, I just don't like these kinds of games, especially if they're put into Call of Duty. If you enjoy them, that's fine, but this is my tier list, and since I don't like Battle Royales, Black Ops 4 is a downgrade, especially since there is no main storyline in this game. It feels like after Black Ops 3 story being dog shit that they just decided to scrap the story aspect entirely. It's not a good trade-off. I mean, there is the Specialist HQ, but there's barely any story there. For the multiplayer of Black Ops 4, it has its pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. Weapon customization is fantastic due to the fact that each of the individual weapons have their own attachments to improve their role of what kind of weapon they are. The progression system is good, the kill streaks are fun to use, although they're not as good as Black Ops 3's score streaks in my opinion, and a small little detail I enjoy in Black Ops 4's multiplayer is the smack talk your character makes for when you kill somebody. Now the cons. The maps are small, perhaps smaller than Black Ops 3's maps, and the map design is also pretty basic, some of which are also packed to the brim with invisible walls, which is very contradictory to the fact the game has advanced movement. It's like the map designers intentionally made it so that the maps have no verticality whatsoever. Perks on Black Ops 4 are also pretty weak. Some specialist abilities are way too overpowered like Ajax's 9-bang, or his shield, or Prophet's secret mine. It's not fun getting constantly killed by these overpowered abilities, whereas in Black Ops 3, it felt balanced, and it felt like you needed the same amount of skill to use them, or kill someone else that's using it. Unless if it's the battery's war machine, that shit's annoying. But in Black Ops 4, if the enemy team has their specialist abilities ready, you're probably fucked. It's not fun. A bare bones playlist for Black Ops 4 would have been nice considering how buffed the specialists are in this game's multiplayer. Another thing that bugs me about Black Ops 4 is how bloated the microtransactions are. I mean, it's worse than Black Ops 3. How could they top Black Ops 3 with their shitty business practices? Now, as for the zombies, it's a disaster. Gobblegums from Black Ops 3 have been scrapped and replaced with elixirs, which are a complete downgrade, and most of the time barely do anything of value. Some of the worst easter eggs are also in this game. It's not that the easter eggs themselves are bad, but it's the steps you need to do in order to achieve them that are bad. The UI for zombies is also a complete clusterfuck. All of this bullshit is on screen whereas in games like Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 3, the UI was simple to understand, not over the top like this one. Also, why is it that the zombies will always spawn in front of me and not behind borders like in any other zombies match? 
ridiculous game design choices. Kind of like the perk system in the zombies mode for this game. They got rid of fucking Juggernog and replaced it with watered down perks while simultaneously making even more broken perks like Dying Wish? What the hell did they do to my precious zombies mode? I get that the point is to not make crutch picks, but they broke their own point by adding even more crutch picks like Stamina Up, Dying Wish, PhD Slider, so on and so forth. This game sucks balls. It's going in D tier. Hey! Who are you people? What do you want from me? You want the numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. Black Ops 1. Now we're getting into some top quality stuff. Black Ops 1 is perhaps known worldwide as one of the best COD games to date, and it's not hard to see why. Booting up this game, you are greeted with perhaps the most iconic main menu in COD history and maybe even as far as to say video game history. It perfectly sets the tone of what exactly you're getting into, and I wish more COD games had this kind of menu. There's even an easter egg where you can escape from your seat, go to a terminal, and play Dead Ops Arcade. An amazing Zombies minigame in Black Ops, which would then return to Black Ops 3 with a lot of improvements. Other things you can do on this terminal is play Zork, use cheat codes, and other sorts of commands. It's a really good secret. Now onto the campaign. It is phenomenal. First of all, Black Ops is the game that goes beyond its predecessors due to the fact that the player's character has a character. You're not a silent protagonist like in the previous games. Alex Mason actually interacts with other characters well, and it makes the story all the more captivating, especially in the opening sequence where Mason is being interrogated. I really like the sense of mystery that the game showcases, and as the story unravels it gets more and more suspenseful. This game had some balls, man. Forcing me to aim a gun at John F. Kennedy? Man, what a scene. This game also had tons of effort put into the characters as well as their backstories. I know Reznov is a character from World at War, so I may be missing some stuff about him, but from what I've seen of him in Black Ops 1, I really like his character. And he's pretty much a badass. Then you also got other good characters like Woods, Hudson, and even the villain Dragovich. Another thing that captivates me about Black Ops 1 is how it blends in with historical events. Unlike games like Vanguard or World War II, the stories in these games seem believable, and on top of that, the campaign is also really fun to play. Some missions may be over the top and the amount of ammo on your stockpile may be unrealistic, but the gameplay is awesome, and from what I've heard at least, it's a major step up from World at War. The multiplayer is also fun, progression system is nice to go through, the gunplay is great and all the weapons are fun to use. And this is also the very first COD game to introduce the gun game mode, which is honestly one of my favorite modes in COD multiplayer. A lot of the locations in the campaign are also seen in the multiplayer, and the map designs are also pretty good. But none can compete with the one, the only, Nuketown baby! Peak map design right here. Thank you Black Ops 1 for introducing Nuketown. It's way better than shipment. In the class customization, you can also outright buy weapons with in-game currencies, which is a nice touch. Of course, this was before they started monetizing it. Overall, the multiplayer for Black Ops 1 is great, and I can't really find anything to complain about it, except for the shotgun sound effects, which sound the same on four shotguns. And of course, Black Ops 1 brought back the zombies mode. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to play any of the DLC maps for Black Ops 1, but here's something you should know. I am a Kino Dare Toten fanboy. It didn't matter to me that I couldn't play all of these maps. I would just hop straight into Kino Dare Toten because in my opinion it is the best zombies map ever made. There's just so much to do in this map and I can't stop playing it. Which is why I praise Zombies Chronicles in Black Ops 3 because they basically took Kino Dare Toten from Black Ops 1 and made it better. You want another reason why I love Kino Dare Toten? I'll give you another reason. 115. Which I would play a sample for you, but it's probably going to get me a copyright strike, so I am not going to play it. Just go check it out for yourself. It is a banger. Black Ops 1 is the game that set the standard for making an amazing side mode. It's got a really fun multiplayer, and one of the best COD campaigns to date. And for that, it obviously has to go into S tier. Great game. The original Call of Duty. The one that started it all. Um, I haven't played this game in forever, but I do vaguely remember that I had a good time with it. And as far as I'm aware, the only thing I did in the original COD is the campaign, so really there's not much to talk about in terms of this game. But I do remember that my favorite mission in the original COD was the Battle of Stalingrad. 
I don't remember why, I just remember in the original COD I would just fuck around in the tutorial mission, and then I would play Battle of Stalingrad a lot, so take that as you will. I will put the original Call of Duty in B tier. It's been ages since I've played it, and I remember having a lot of fun with it, so that's why I put it in B tier. <laughs> So trusted you. I thought I could too. So why in bloody hell does Makarov know you? Modern Warfare 3, the final conclusion to a beloved series of COD games. Although most of it is just a straight up copy of Modern Warfare 2, it has its fair share of things that keep the game interesting. First of all, I really love this game's campaign. In fact, it's one of my top three. Black Ops 1 tops it, but just barely. I love how the story of this particular series turned out over the course of three games. The suspenseful beginnings of Modern Warfare, the intensity of Modern Warfare 2, and the epic conclusion with Modern Warfare 3. Also, side note, I found it clever how the title screen says World War 3 at first, but then flips the letter to say MW3. <laughs> playing with letters is fun. Our favorite characters are back, you know, e except for Ghost. But I want to take a moment to appreciate how awesome of a villain Makarov is. Everything that's happened that's led to this moment is because of him. The bombs in the city, the attack on the airport, kidnapping the president, the death of Soap, Makarov caused it all. I also like Yuri, who turns out to be the guy involved in a lot of the past events of Modern Warfare. He was there when Makarov and his minions shot up an airport. He was there when the bombs blew up a city, and now he's here being interrogated by Captain Price. After that, we get an extremely intense and an extremely satisfying conclusion. After killing Makarov and losing all of his close friends in the midst of chaos, Captain Price takes a smoke. This finale goes hard, and it stands out to me as one of the greatest finales out there in video game history. Having played both MW1 and 2 before this one, and seeing the end of the trilogy unfold, I can confidently say MW3 has one of my favorite COD campaigns by far. It's intense, it's depressing, it's fun to play, and in the end, it's satisfying. I barely played any matches of MW3's multiplayer, but from what I've played, it's just a copy of MW2's multiplayer, but with some watered down map design and more balance, so it's a decent multiplayer I guess. What really got me hooked to MW3 was the Spec Ops mode. While I could go all day about the missions and how fun they are, as well as how some specific missions in this mode switch to perspective based on the campaign's missions, I want to give a lot of praise to the Spec Ops survival mode. God damn, this mode is absolute fire. Most of my playtime went into survival alone. Although I do have a few complaints, the progression system for Spec Ops Survival only goes up to level 50 without prestige. Again, Black Ops 3 lets you prestige in the zombies mode on a separate rank, which increases the replay value. Another issue I have with Spec Ops Survival is that it limits the options you have for perks, and there's also no option to call in friendly helicopters, which I feel like would improve the experience a little, but the rest of Spec Ops Survival is really good. You get to choose your own weapons, as well as weapon attachments and equipments like claymores, you can call in friendly troops, you can choose from a wide variety of maps. A lot of things that Spec Ops Survival got right is what Advanced Warfare got wrong. I adore Spec Ops Survival mode in MW3 because it's a really good competitor with zombies. Overall, MW3, despite its blatantly obvious copying of MW2's gameplay, is still an entirely new package. Although some of the flair that was in MW2's multiplayer has been taken away, so, as an overall package, I put MW3 in A tier.
at last we arrive at Black Ops Cold War. I played this game at launch and yeah, it was pretty bad. However, I will be talking about the game mostly in its current state. And if I'm being honest, it's pretty average. The campaign for the most part is pretty good. We get to see Mason, Woods, and Hudson back in action with, yeah, different actors. But it's not a deal breaker for me because I love these characters, and in Cold War they're still really good. We're also introduced to a brand new main character known as Russell Adler. We also got Helen Park who is... pretty hot. And there's also Lazar. New set of characters alongside our beloved characters Mason, Woods, and Hudson? I dig. A neat thing about Cold War's campaign is the hub, where you can interact with the characters and learn more about them. It's a nice little addition and I kinda want more COD games to have this. Cold War's campaign overall is pretty captivating, and I dig the plot. A group of CIA operatives are here to track down an individual known as Perseus and stop his plans that involve weapons of mass destruction. There's some neat twists here and there, and there's some pretty important decisions you have to make. It's going back to the roots of what made Black Ops 2's campaign so good, is that your choices mattered. On top of that, the missions in Cold War are also pretty fun. Not only that, but unlike Black Ops 3 and 4, Cold War actually connects to the other stories. I still don't get what Black Ops 3 was trying to accomplish with its campaign, it's just a clusterfuck. Cold War's campaign is really good, I will admit. However, I cannot excuse the launch of this game. Playing the game at launch, the cutscenes would lag, the audio would be ahead of the video, the screen would melt, the game would crash, it's a disaster. So the campaign is really good, but how's the multiplayer? Eh, it's okay. There are some decent maps here and there, the weapons feel nice to use, the gunsmith is really good, the list of modes has been vastly improved since launch, but what weighs it down for me is the skill-based matchmaking. It's honestly shocking how broken the SBMM can be, and even though it seems to have been a problem in Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War is probably the worst offender for me. I would have one good match where I get a bunch of kills, and then the very next match I would get absolutely bodied and put up against people at max prestige. Not good. Some of the score streaks in Cold War are also way too expensive. The care package is 2,000 points, the cruise missile is 3,500, the gunship is 10,000 points. Why are these score streaks so expensive? Cold War's multiplayer overall is mediocre. It has some good elements in it, and also some pretty bad ones. Cold War Zombies, in retrospective, is not as bad as I thought it was. The Zombies mode in this game is completely revamped compared to its predecessors. The scoring is different, the health system is different, there's a lot more options for upgrades, you can choose your starting weapon, the mechanics in Cold War Zombies is solid. At launch, Zombies only had one map, but now there's also Firebase Z, which is honestly a really good map. It's nice to see a brand new Zombies map that isn't a straight up remake. Looking at you Black Ops 4. Another really cool addition to Cold War Zombies is Outbreak, where you explore an open world and kill zombies, activate a beacon to progress to the next mission, or scavenge for resources. I think Outbreak is a really good mode. It stands out a lot compared to all the other zombies maps. And it also gives you a sense of freedom with its gameplay where you can basically do what you want. So yeah, Outbreak is cool. So as I mentioned earlier, the zombies for this game is revamped. I am not a fan. I much prefer how the older zombies worked. Although it is a nice addition to have exfil so that you can end the match on a high note, I am not a fan of the revamped systems of this zombies mode. My first complaint is that this game's zombies mode feels too easy, like I can get to round 30 solo no problem, and it's most likely because of the new health system and the new upgrades. In games like Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 3, it's a lot more of a challenge to try and get that high of a round. Most of the time in Cold War, I don't feel like I even have to try in order to get a really high score, unless if it's Outbreak. I get that it's easier because they're trying to appeal to the casual audience, but I feel like that's a bad approach, because then you're just alienating the veterans who are looking for a more hardcore experience. Plus, in older maps like Kino Der Toten, they did not have to be easy in order to appeal to the casual player. A lot of people got addicted to the zombies mode back then, and one of the main reasons it had a following to begin with is that zombies is about trial and error. Most of the time in zombies, if you get cornered and downed, it's because you did something wrong. I think it'd be better to stick to zombies roots rather than watering it down. So as an overall experience, Cold War has its fair share of great elements, but it's watered down by a lot of missed potential and the watered down zombies mode. Because of that, this is the only COD game, in my opinion, that belongs in C tier. And with that, my tier list comes to an end. With this tier list in mind, I will be using it as a reference for setting my expectations for Modern Warfare 2022. 
Once the game comes out, I will buy it, play it, and review it. And in that review, I will use this tier list in order to construct my points on if they either miss the mark or they do it just right. Modern Warfare 2022 so far looks really good, so I hope they don't mess it up. Or at the very least, it should be a better game than Vanguard. Thank you all for watching, be sure to subscribe because I need clout.